Hey there everybody, it's RCK and I'm glad to have you back here again today. Um, of course, this is uh, something I do every now and then are these overviews for uh, nations, being nation mods or, or, or mods in nations, I'd rather say. Um, but this is one I've done a few times and this is the Middle Earth mod here. So the Lord of the Rings for Dominions 5, a really cool mod, really good people. Um, definitely should check it out. I know they have a Discord that needs to be checked out as well. And uh, let's go ahead and jump on in here. Uh, so this is for the Woodland Realm. Uh, Greenwood the Great. Greenwood is the greatest of forests and has been the home of the Sylvan Elves. So this is who we're playing as here, the Sylvan Elves, for countless years or who we're going over. Greenwood has been far enough away from other nations and great wars that it has never been involved in a full war, though minor incursions and raids are not unheard of. Its people take great joy in life to spend much of their time feasting and dancing under the stars. Of course, that's it's what elves do. Um, they're good for nothing, I tell you. <laughs> I'm just not a big fan of elvish nations, but I'll try, of course. Um, a race, a stealthy, sylvan... Uh, sailing, swimming, disease immune, basic sylvan units have sloth power. This is a really cool thing. We'll, we'll look at it. This is, I really like this about nation. Uh, all mages research better in sloth. Cool. Like medium infantry, skilled archers, horse archers, sacreds can go berserk. Nature, water, astral, some fire. Uh, weak mages or weak priest, one on average, one average. Uh, buildings, primitive forts, temples cost 200 and forests, labs cost 400 and forests. Cool. Definitely seeing a uh, theme here. You want to stay in the forest, kind of like Pangea. Uh, your temples and your labs do cost less. Temples costing 200 less and labs costing 100 less. Uh, any kind of discount, of course, is great. Uh, so we'll go ahead and look at the sites. Here we have Amon Lank. Lank. You have two nature gems, and then the forest river will give you two water and one nature. So overall, you get we'll be getting three nature and two water once you start the game. So let's go ahead and look at these units we have here. Can be recruited in all forests as a sylvan elf. Uh, Eleven gold, four resources, nine recruitment points, thirteen hit points, five protection. Okay, uh, average cost we see. A decent resource and low protection, of course, that makes sense. And being low on both sides, there, uh, magical resistance 12, of course, above, above average for a human. 10 morale is, of course, normal, that is average uh, strength. Okay, attack skill and defense skill is kind of low, but I feel like this is due to the fact of it being a low gold unit. Uh, precision is nice at 12, combat speed 13 is fine. Map movement at 16 is okay as well, that's kind of a little bit faster. Uh, than your normal human speed. So that's good to see. Uh, then we have some of these tags that we have here. We have swimming, which is very nice. Uh, you won't have to go cold to worry about those rivers that you may see. Stealthy of 60 is also really good. A uh, low chance that they will be seen. They have forest survival, so they will move through forests um, a lot easier, which is nice. Patrol bonus one, I think... I have not updated the mod recently, but I think they've gotten rid of most of these patrol bonus bonuses here. I think they've gotten rid of those a lot. I have Dark Vision, 50. Understandable. They are elves. I think they have really great eyesight. Don't know if they can see in the dark. I don't think they can, but they do have better than human eyesight. They are disease resistant, 100. Okay. Uh, does actually make sense in a kind of a Lord of the Rings style because elves, they don't get sick. They don't die of old age. Uh, they're going to die in battle. That's the only way they're going to die. If not, they're going to live forever. I, I believe that's true. Uh, I haven't brushed up on my knowledge of Lord of the Rings in a while, but I do quite enjoy it. And then next we here we have Sloth Power. So this unit is more powerful in provinces with high sloth and less powerful in provinces with productivity. Of course, uh, elves always staying in their forest, not really, they're much different than dwarves in that sense that dwarves is all about production and uh, manufacturing and things like that, and building, whereas elves just want to live in their forest, live with nature, 
Um, so that is a very cool little way of putting this in. I do like this. And of course, this is going to give, uh, in Sloth 3, it's going to give plus one in your defense, plus one for every Sloth for in defense skill and attack skill. Don't know if it does it for strength. I do not remember. So that is very interesting there. Um, definitely helping out your own troops in your own dominion. We have another Sylvan Elf here. Now this looks like a Sp Spearman Silver Elf. Uh, so a buckler, leather cap, leather halberd, protection of 7. Uh, as far as the stats go, they are very similar to the last one we just spoke about. Uh, so a little bit higher protection here. One more resource cost. 11 gold, 9 recruitment points. Okay. So just a very uh, a chaffy, uh, light infantry unit that you have here um, that goes along with your archer. Here we have the Greenwood Guard. Uh, so... This was where we're getting to see a lot more resources. Uh, 17, okay, 12 recruitment points, 14 gold. But you are going up to 13 protection, was a lot better. But you do not have sloth power, unfortunate. But you do have average or above average uh, defense go due to the shield that you have. You have swimming, stealthy, far survival, castle defense bonus of 1. Of course, the patrol bonus might not be there if you're looking at an updated version of the mod. Uh, Dark Vision 15, disease, disease resistant, a broadsword here is pretty nice. Doing that 17 slash damage. Um, that's pretty good damage, honestly. Uh, that'll get through most protection that you're going to have to worry about. I mean, of course, it's going to have difficulties with things like uh, MA Ohm and such. Uh, but uh, that is... Most things are fine. Any light infantry, the medium-sized infantry, you're not going to have to worry about. They're going to definitely be able to get through that. Where was I? So, uh, next we have the Noble Guard here. Even a higher amount of resources. 22 resources, 13 recruitment points. You're going to have 15 protection. What was the last one? Was the green one? 13. Okay, 13 to 15. Okay, so there is a jump there. Uh, swimming, of course, the averages does have a bodyguard tag to it, which is nice. Uh, strength 12, attack skill 12. I think this is the highest attack skill we've seen so far. And this defense skill 14 is pretty good. Morale, to, morale 12, magic resistance 11, pretty good as well. Uh, so very nice here, very nice kind of a heavier infantry. I, I guess this would be your medium infantry but for you of course I, this might be your heavy infantry just because i doubt you have much heavy uh, you have the limnath here Ooh, and here we see our sacred unit here so 19 gold 13 resources 15 recruitment points very cheap very massable unit we have uh, 13 hit points 13 protection 12 mr 11 morale okay uh, 12, 11, 12, as far as these stats go here, which are fine. Uh, sacred, Swimming, Stealthy, Berserker. Good to see you have Berserker on you already. Patrol, Dark Vision. So, uh, Berserker and Dark Vision are nice to have uh, because those are like actual blesses you can put on that you don't have to worry about. Swimming is too. I think Swimming is a bless you can put on. I don't remember. But I know Dark Vision 50 and Berserker is, and it's, it's generally nice to have those and make sure your guys stay on the battlefield longer. And if you do fight into a cave or in the darkness or anything along those lines, at least you'll have a little bit of a benefit. Um, it won't hurt you as bad as it might hurt somebody else. But being sacred is also a pretty big deal, depending on what you want to do with these. Uh, definitely could see some small raiding groups. Don't know if we have any other sacreds. We'll definitely look. So next we have the Sylvan Elf Hunter. Uh, so this is a cab unit. I bet you can recruit them in all forests. And yes, you can. 22 gold, so more expensive, of course, since it is a cab unit. 7 resources for 7 protection. Then 19 recruitment points. Of course, I'm sure you're not going to be able to come across these guys as much as you would anyone else. Uh, that's why you see much more recruitment points. And this is a cab unit, size 3. Um, good to see that. MR of 12, good. Strength, attack skill, average at 10, but defense skill is 16. Uh, so we do see a spear weapon, link 3 spear, spear, which is nice. And then we have a short bow. Sorry if I messed up on words a little bit. I just got off of doing another video. And it, it's, it, I don't know, I don't like doing videos back to back. Uh, because once you sit here and talk for an hour straight about one thing. And then start talking about an hour straight or 45 minutes or however long on another thing. 
I, it kind of wears your mouth down a little bit, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but next week, he is just wearing a leather armor and a buckler. Um, so as far as that goes, he will, if he is in a combat, you know, he might get in trouble. But he does have sloth power, so you can see uh, some definite boost there on his uh, stats um, in sloth 3. So that's nice, you have to keep that in mind. Next, you have the Royal Huntsman here. 28 gold, 17 resources, 30 recruitment points, a spear, and a short bow, uh, swimming, dark vision, far survival, stealthy as far as we've seen, disease resistance, um, pretty good stats. Mm. At this point, this is just a, uh, a Sylvan Elf Hunter with a little bit more protection, I feel. If you want something to fill that role, of course you have it. And next we have two units here. It says can be recruited in all non-fort provinces. So we have the Woodsman and the Woodsman. <laughs> so 10 gold, 6 resources, 9 recruitment points. 11 hit points, 6 protection, stealthy. And he's holding a battle axe. 10 across the board here for strength, attack skill, and defense skill. But a battle axe. That's still a lot of damage. This is a very, very cheap unit. Um, to deal, to have a pretty large output of damage, so that is very nice to see, very cool. Then you have your bow version, you have a long bow, okay. Uh, 45 range, this is actually pretty good, and then you have an axe attack that is dealing 18 slash. So the, both of these units are fairly strong, honestly. Uh, it's interesting to see that the Sylvan Elf has a short bow with a range of 35, but the Woodsman has a long bow with 45 range. Uh, just kind of expected the elves and have the kind of uh have the superior archer power there but yeah the longbow is dealing more damage and will shoot farther so keep that in mind uh, next we'll start looking into the commanders here here we have the hunter captain uh, just a 40 leadership. This is what you're going to be using to raid, people. This is your raiding commander here. Uh, so keep that in mind. A very cheap unit, small leadership, because you don't need a lot to raid. I will definitely not take 40 in a raiding party. Uh, very high stealthy. Uh, stag to them. You can swim with the rest of them. Uh, this is what you're going to use to raid. So, next we have a merrymaker. Uh, 75 gold, 2 recruitment points, protection 2, magical resistance 14, leadership 40, okay. This is a sacred commander, stealthy, dark vision, it's a spy that reduces unrest by 1 and spreads laziness. Uh, this unit will affect the productivity level of the entire province it is located in. So this is quite interesting. That you have something like this, uh, since you could be able to use it in a way that you could take productivity while also fighting in sloth. Um, might definitely be a little bit more trouble than what it's worth. Uh, but you could put these merrymakers, hide them in uh, strategic locations where you do plan on having battles at. And... Um, before you get around to having said battle, um, you probably already have Sloth 3 in that province. So that is that'd be something to think about. Or you could have it to where um, you spread these guys out into your provinces. I don't know if they spread in, I don't know if the laziness spread or Sloth spread goes into neighboring provinces. But that could be a way to spread it as well. And just kind of keeping your forts at high productivity or productivity or even at neutral um, so you have neither one of them just be able to reduce more units faster uh, interesting things to think about and the reduce unrest is also very nice um, having a spy is kind of cool as well could be very useful um, gathering information and su such can be definitely used uh, diplomatically in the game so it is also cool did I skip? No, I didn't skip anyone. So we have the Greenwood Guardian next. What did that say down there? Can we recruit in all forest? Okay. So this is a Nature 1 Philosopher 
Oh, so you have philosophers as well. So yes, this is definitely pushing you really hard uh, to go Sloth 3. Um, because at Sloth 3, this is going to give this 50 gold, uh, 50 gold very cheap upkeep mage, plus 6 research per turn, almost doubling it. Uh, so that is going to push you up to 13 research with this nature 1. Uh, that is really, really nice. This is also a very nice warm caster um, if needed in a pinch. Uh, so very, very cool unit we have here. Very, very useful unit. Is a very has a lot of things he could definitely do for you. Next we have the Star Watcher here, an Astral One, Holy Two, Philosopher Two. Ooh, eighty-five gold, thirty-four gold per turn, or per year for upkeep. Um, of course, being an Astral Two, you're not going to have to really worry about ever having uh, Holy Threes. Or having Astral and Holy 2. Um, because with uh, two more Astral Mages. And this as the Communion Master. It's going to be a Holy 3. And you're able to do Divine Blessing. Um, so very very easy. Very very quickly do you have a Holy 3. Whenever you need it. Um, so that is cool. Otherwise I mean this is. Um, a great Astral Mage. Very cheap. Um, he has a going to have a lot. Up to 13 research points per turn. Uh, like I said, very cheap, very good, very good buy here, very good mage. Next we have the Clarnerist, <laughs> not too sure, uh, has five elven fires that decide the start of each battle. Hmm, okay, 95 gold, uh, decent upkeep because it's not a holy mage, uh, plus one philosopher, uh, so it won't get as much of a benefit than the other ones, but it will go up to 14 research points per turn if you do have Sloth 3. This is a Fire 1, Astral 1, Nature 1, so these are going to possibly be either. I mean, they could be Communion Slaves just for you to have the paths that you may be casting as a Slave itself. This is just a, such a cheap mage. Um, instead of having to do off-path casting with the other chassis there, so you have to keep that in mind. Um, yeah, um, definitely can use some stuff in here. And then Sailing, which is kind of cool. Spellsinger, okay. Next we have the River Master. This is a 125 gold, 100 gold per year, Sailing unit that we have here also a spell singer and it's going to be uh, out of the box a water two nature one and i'll tell you right off the bat what i'm seeing here is a foul vapors caster um, i see you doing a lot of uh, uh poison ward and then casting foul vapors with a booster on this fella here because uh, i think you have to have a booster on and get them to nature two i think it's a nature three water one spell to cast i think um, so yeah, very, very easy for you to cast Foul Vapors for sure. Uh, very nice, very nice. A lot of uh, nasty things you can do with that if your opponents really aren't ready for Foul Vapors. Next we have Lady of the Greenwood. And this is 180 gold, 72 per year, Nature 2. So you'll be having those Nature uh, Boosters. You'll be able to get at least Nature 3 from the looks of it so far. Philosopher 2. Um, so you'll be able to go up to 15 research points per turn with this mage here if you did sloth. Oh, this is also a healer. You do not see the healer tag very often. Um, but that is very nice to see. Probably not as helpful since you guys, well, you guys are disease resistant. So ability automatically up to one affliction. Yeah, these aren't disease healers. They're just healers. Don't remember if healer heals diseases as well. Or if it just fixes fixes afflictions, or is or is it disease healer that does uh, just diseases and the afflictions are not healed by that? I do not remember if that heals both. If healer heals both or not, I do not remember. So it is a pretty cool, pretty cool little mage you have here. Probably wouldn't be having as many of them uh, <clears throat> since they are a little bit more expensive than your other mages, and not as useful, but they do have a use still. So, like I said, not having as many. Then we have Lord of the Greenwood. 
And this is 325 gold. Pretty expensive. It's about like 11 gold per turn. Uh, water 2, Nature 2 that has random paths of either water or nature and then having a 20% chance to hit it again. So you'll be seeing some water 3s and nature 3s. Uh, being water 3s, you can have the booster get you to water 4 being the jacket or the cloak. Uh, and then uh, with a bracelet. So with the random, the cloak, and the bracelet, you'll be up to water 5. And then you can also get to nature 4 here. Uh, with this mage as well, so that's very nice. Um, I can honestly see you going, what is, do they prefer any, doesn't seem like they prefer a heat scale, so uh, possibly going cold 3, maybe be very beneficial for you, for at that point you'll be able to cast Grip of Winter and such for uh, any uh, enemies attacking into you, of course, any of the uh, fire temp Nations will not be very, very happy attacking into you who fighting Grip of Winter. That'd be very, very painful for them. Uh, so that's something to think about there. Uh, since you really have no reason to go Heat, of course, you do already have the River Crossing, and the uh, it would make it hard to pass through mountains at that point, since, okay, okay, rivers don't need to be frozen for you to pass since you have swimming, but the mountains will be hard for you to pass because you're going cold three but honestly mountains aren't that big of a deal i'm sure they might have some spells here and there they have rouse int so you get ints that is pretty cool i don't know quite what the chassis of this int is for 14 gems but it might be good call int moot rouse a, gr rouse a group of ints to call fight defend their forest so you get 5 ints for 55 gems. Of course, there is a, a discount there for sure. So that's cool. You get to see ints. That's very interesting. Just checking through real fast to make sure. Elven fires. Elven elves secrets making fires that catch the eyes. Can feel a number effects 5. I wonder if that is the... Can only be cast by... Okay, so that was the little... Uh, uh, Fires that join into the battle with that other mage that we spoke about just a minute ago. So that is interesting. I already looked at that one. Nothing there. Nothing there. Okay, so they do get, a, what, three or three or four spells. Uh, so that is kind of cool. I kind of like their flag here as well. Well, I'm just trying to give you some ideas. If you do end up playing this nation, uh, things that you can try, maybe uh, more beneficial you will definitely want to take a pretender chassis that will break you into other paths for sure because you are very uh, limited very very low fire only one fire uh, very low astral only one astral as far as the highest you can get for it um, you can get high water in nature um, but that i mean that's it those four paths and two of them are super low uh course death sky or air air death earth are all great paths that you do not have access to and which are kind of uh, even harder to even get access to in, in blood as well um, by indies now nature nature water uh, possibly nature water ash are the easiest ones to come by um, so you have to keep that in mind that your easy paths that you might find in any provinces you already have, and the ones you do have aren't even that great. So definitely build a pretender around uh, making sure that you get proper access to all the magic in the game. Then you have a, I forgot to go over the last uh, commander we have here, a Woodsman Chieftain here. Uh, 35 gold, 7 resources, 1 recruitment point, 6 protection. Uh, honestly, this guy will also work as a very cheap they're the same cost very cheap um commander uh, the rating commander that you can use so kind of cool a uh, very cool little nation we have here um something i think would be really interesting for this uh mod here they have like a uh have like the mordor be like super overpowered give them a lot of bonuses like to, uh, gold and such and everything and then 
uh, have a, a kind of a, a team of like good players because um, they these the good factions do seem a little bit weaker if I remember I don't know this one seems a little bit weaker than Mordor of course uh, but uh, having them fight like that having like a one v three but of course the uh, enemy their evil nation is kind of overpowered and given a lot of bonuses so it'd be kind of a cool thing to do. Other than that, not not too much to say. I do like the way it looks. I really like the sloth power of the nation. I think that is a very unique way. I have never really seen that used. Um, so that is really cool. I thought that was a pretty interesting fact here about this nation. As far as it goes, I won't be expanding with them too much. I'm, I won't do anything like that. I just wanted to really go over it. Um, this is the the third or this is the second age of course in early whenever you load up this mod the early age will have uh, like first age or yeah and then the middle age is the second age for Lord of the Rings and then uh, I don't believe they came out with them yet but I know they are working on them uh, the late age will be the third age so the most uh, during the events of the Lord of the Rings will be in the late age whenever that comes out. And I, I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, very interesting in that because, of course, that is the most well-known age as far as uh, the Lord of the Rings goes for most people. Um, but it is very cool and I'm very happy to see that we do have people working on a mod like this. Uh, because, of course, we definitely always need more mods to play and mods to look at. Always help and grow the game, um, just because you might not like the vanilla factions of this game doesn't mean you might not like um, other mods and stuff of other factions. Of course, we've seen the Warhammer mod, uh, we've seen a lot of just uh, mods that people have made just because they like them or just wanted to make a new faction. Uh, we've also seen things like uh, kind of spin-offs of different factions. We've seen Hellenica mod, which I'm not too sure about that one. As far as where they all come from, um, like this one, Lord of the Rings, Warhammer, like there's there's a lot of stuff, and a lot of them are just uh, some of most of them are just modders that wanted to make nations, and they just have kind of cool nations they made and try to balance them out. And uh, that's really all I have, guys. I hope you like this little video I made. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.